Okay, so this is one place that I've probably driven by maybe a thousand times, if not more. And basically it's right outside the Scuba Circuit gates. And uh, it's KMS uh, Motorsport. And they primarily deal only in Hachirokus, specifically restorations and just bringing, you know, old cars back from pretty much the dead into like perfection, which we'll see inside the shop here. So KMS is one of the original old school Hachiroku shops and you can tell out of these three cars they have here in the workshop working away they really do take the cars right down to bare metal and then resurrect them to perfection so this is pretty much step one I guess and you can tell there's like a ton of parts around to kind of transform them into what you see here. So the full name is Koshimizu Motorsports KMS. So as Koshimizu-san just explained, there's a variety of things he does here. So basically he starts restorations from bare metal. This car in particular has been crashed and therefore uh, he cut off the front section and then fitted the one that he sourced from the car outside. a very special car here guys this is Keichi's Chia's N211 you may have seen this car many times in the hot version N2 battles which sadly they don't longer make they do race in Okayama circuit though but uh, the car is stored here and I'm having a little bit moment so you will apologize if I run out of words Wow that is insane. Whoa. This was built by Inoue San at TRD back in the day. You see AP Racing pedal box and brake bias adjuster. This super cool TRD bucket seat. Ah, onto this. So yeah, it's missing the, the panel here that goes on top of the intakes, but there it is. The three master cylinders, the pedal box, all the stitch welding. So it's got a carbon bonnet. Of course, it has a hot version on the back. You can see the fuel safety cell from ATL back there, all stripped out. So uh, apparently this engine is actually a regular 4 AG. Um, well, I say regular because when Sakurai-san and Inoue-san from TRD built this car, they actually fitted a Formula Atlantic version of 4 AG uh, that revved to 10,500 RPM. That actually wasn't a balanced setup enough because you know while power did you know uh, develop, it lacked a lot of torque. And in the competitions that this N2 car was raced in, particularly here at Scuba they needed more torque. So they went back to a 4AG. Sakurai-san fitted a 300 degree cam, 11 millimeter lift, and that gave the perfect balance of about 300 horsepower, but a slightly more broader torque curve that allowed Atsuchiya-san to kind of extract all the performance he needed from this car at the current weight level uh, that it sits. So about 800 something kilos. And I love how they've just left the tire marks on the back over fender. Of course, the car sits on uh, Watanabe's plenty of dish, Dunlop slicks, and so simple inside, just a stack to 
tachometer, oil temperature, oil pressure, and water. Simple as it gets. Of course, there's a little switch panel here with all the necessary switches in place. And it's pretty crazy, they actually left the, the door trim here on the driver's side. Absolutely amazing. back to the shop and take a look at some of the other cars that he's working on. So right outside the shop is the, the donor car that we saw donated its front end to the first car on the right that's being restored and put together. So as Koshimizu was saying, what he does here at KMS is basically the entire process of the restoration. So starting from the bare chassis, uh, fixing it if it was in an accident, and then working on stuff like spot welding. As you can see here, he's actually drilled out all the places where he's gonna spot weld. Um, and then what he does to retain that factory look is after the spot weld, you'll either, well, you'll probably like kind of machine it down a little bit, grind it down and then apply the right putty so that when time comes to paint, it actually ends up looking like the factory, the factory car. So you can see a little bit of a dimple here but it's kind of all hidden away because uh, that's the way he does things and he wants to kind of have that factory fresh feel about it. As the restoration progresses, he then starts working on the body, of course, and all the suspension parts, subframes. And of course, painting too is done here in the shop. There's a little paint booth here where he takes care of all the painting and powder coating that he does to all the components, puts the car together and then moves on to the engines. So all engines are tuned or refreshed here. You can see a fresh block here that's been repainted on the outside, ready to be assembled uh, with the right parts. And of course, he'll also take care of 20 valve swaps. And uh, as he was showing us, the 20 valve actually sits a little bit higher if you look in the engine bay compared to a regular 16 valve 4 AG. As I noticed here, there's some sick headers. These are also uh, KMS parts that are built in-house. Uh, they offer three types of exhaust manifolds. Um, this one here on the 20 valve actually is a perfect example of their street Takohashi, as they call it here, octopus legs. Basically, this is the more sedate version uh, because as you get closer to the racing version, the actual curvature of the headers sweeps up kind of higher to where the strap race is. So uh, three different types, progressively getting more extreme. Uh, this is a four into one, so it'll be a little bit quieter. Still retain the performance upgrade that you would get from a system like this but without going too crazy, both on uh, the noise and the actual space it takes up in the engine bay. Uh, one other thing that is built in house is this uh, aluminum uh, intake cover, and that is topped up with a blitz filter here on this particular example. And they'll do different versions. They're actually, they're, you're able to actually disassemble the center part so you get access into the throttles themselves. And uh, in this particular version, it's actually crinkle coated to kind of match the black top coloring to keep it all very factory stock and kind of like not standing out too much when you kind of have a look at the engine bay. This one again is a work in progress, fresh assembly, all powder coated subframes. And you can see he actually runs a fuel pressure regulator there with its own little dial and it's just 
beautifully all put together. Attention to detail is at the top here. So I was actually asking Koshimizu-san how long it takes, you know, approximately from like starting a build, kind of starting off like this, right down to bare metal, to the finished car. And with himself doing the majority of the work together with uh, two other guys that he has here, it takes about 18 months on average. So depending on what the customer requires, if it's a swap, it'll probably take longer. If some parts are hard to kind of source, it'll take a little bit longer, but approximately about a year and a half. So if you're looking to get your car, your Hachiroku completely restored, that's what it would take. Don't ask me about price because of course that will depend a lot on how the car comes in, what condition it's in, what parts are missing, what the owner would like done to it. And uh, over here are tons of parts that are either waiting to be fitted or pulled off a particular car. Either to be replaced or repainted. Lots of uh, cam covers here, alternators. I actually noticed this particular build here in the middle runs an HPI oil cooler mounted right in front of the radiator. Again, tons and tons of parts, bolts, brackets, you name it, they keep everything. With these cars, you're gonna have to because you never know what you're gonna find or what you're gonna struggle sourcing. So process that these guys go to. You can see actually the seat come with that little pump up bowl so you can uh, adjust the bolsters. Nardi steering wheel, TRD shifter, all the top parts on check. Amazing little shop. I'm so glad I stopped here today. I've been meaning to do it for so many years. And what an amazing guy to just open up his shop again to me and just talk Hachirokus and get into so much detail. And the craziest thing is he actually used to race in the N2 series. He actually won uh, one race back in the day. And uh, you know, this is a guy that has literally dedicated his entire life and craft to perfecting the Hachiroku. He's been doing this for over 20 years, specifically on the Hachiroku, but he's been a mechanic for 44 years. He's just 60 years old and he's been working well over half of his life, most of his life on cars. Absolutely amazing. So there you have it. That's the original KMS logo and website. I'm not sure if that website is still active. We'll have to check it out. But if it is, I'll put it in the description below. I'll probably have to ask, but I do wonder, you know, if you're a Hachiroko only, Hachiroko specific shop, how many colors do you need to stock up on? I would imagine that white and black would be the bulk of your, you know, storage of paint. And of course, carbon fiber. I guess clear would be needed for that. Actually, one of the most surprising things that I asked is if he's ever had any uh, customers from abroad. And apparently he's only been uh, restoring cars from customers here in Japan. So I find that pretty surprising seeing how many Hachiroku fans there are out there that would want to not only purchase the right car, but get it like sorted and done in Japan before they ship it back home. So uh, if you're in the market for an 86, I suggest you check out KMS because these guys do amazing work. So I just want to say a massive thank you to Koshimizu-san uh, again for you know allowing us into shop today and I'm so happy I got to stop here today and just take a few minutes to walk around the shop and just embrace the work that these guys do and it's very important work because they're you know at the core of keeping these amazing cars very important JDM cars alive and operating as they should and what an amazing thing that we actually got to see Kuechi Tsuchiyo's N2 11 up close. So massive thank you. I uh, hope you enjoyed it and uh, let me know beneath if you want to see more Hachiroku content on the channel.